We're driving at uh, maximum 6,000 revs. We've got a, quite a high diff in it, and our plan um, was to finish, and it looks like we're going to achieve that. It's going to be a finish uh, after a lot of strife and a great reward for persistency. Well, this is our first uh, ever finish in a manufacturer's championship race, Evan, so that we're uh, on top of the world at the moment. Well, look, How many have you tried? I think we've entered a, probably about 15. This will be your first finish. This will be our first finish, and uh, we look like we'll, we, we could well be in the first 10 cars too. Well, you must be as anxious as an Alan Moffat or uh, one of the other top runners for a victory because it means so very much to you, Jim Keogh. Well, this one will mean a lot more to me to finish than for Alan Moffat to win, I'm sure of that. <laughs> well said, Jim. <laughs> And meaning nothing against uh, Alan, but of course, uh, John Goss has been in and out of the pits. Uh, it would seem that uh, the Falcons had started uh, today's race, your car, and possibly the Goss Pescarello car will be the only two Ford V8s to finish the race. Well, Gossie's had his share of problems. Uh, just 30 seconds ago, he was still sitting at the end of the pit lane. I don't know if he's still there now. Uh, they couldn't get the car restarted after an unscheduled pit stop. I think that uh, they were up against it from the start because uh, John uh, didn't get the car to the track until Thursday. And, uh, in his first two laps, he crashed the vehicle and they spent the next two days in Bathurst trying to repair it and say so that uh, it was obviously a very, very hasty preparation and uh, he was doomed from the start, I would have thought. Yes, uh, preparation seems to be the uh, the key to everything. Uh, one only has to look at the, the Marlborough dealer team for that, Jim. Just looking at our car running around now, I just wish that we had the mechanics and the money to put into our little car that uh, some of those cars out front are, uh, have put into them because, uh, I tell you what, those drivers aren't that much much better than Johnny Mann and I. OK, tell me this, uh, very interesting, but we don't really know the official figures of, of the big budgets of the, maybe the Marlborough Holden dealer team or Alan Moffat sponsors, but uh, what sort of money have you put into the Bathurst exercise for this year? Well, for this year, uh, we've put a, a very frugal effort in. Um, we built the car out of engines that we purchased last year with sponsorship from Radio Rentals, and uh, Melford Motors tipped in some money for us this year. Uh, I wouldn't uh, like to embarrass the sponsors by saying how much, but it was a relatively small amount. It was just enough to cover our uh, expenses, and we haven't bought any, virtually any new parts for this meeting. But we did build the thing out of the best possible uh, stock of our spare parts. Yes, in terms of, uh, of cost exercise, though, for Bathurst. Uh... Oh, the, the parts involved in, uh, that will be worn out uh, just in this weekend for our car alone would be probably between five and $10,000. Yes. Just the parts alone, let alone the hours of labour in it. Yes, it's, I guess it's very hard for our viewers around Australia to understand that as being a frugal exercise. People cannot understand how you can spend money on motor racing, but I'll tell you what, it's just like standing under a coal shower and ripping up $50 bills. <laughs> I think you have to be a spendthrift with a sense of humour to be out there. Yes, well put, Jim. Thanks very much for your time. As they say about motor racing, the way to make a small fortune for motor racing is to start with a big fortune. Jim Key, I thank you very much. In the race at the uh, present time,